Welcome back to The Girl Who Speaks Bear, uh, written by our friend Sophie Anderson, uh, illustrated by the wonderful Katrine Hanesta, and again, read with uh, permission from Osborne Publishers. So thanks, guys. You join me today in my lounge dining room. Uh, I'm back working from home this week. We're up to chapter eight, Ivan the Grey. My jaw drops open and I gasp at the sight of the wolf in front of me. He's enormous, larger than I imagined a wolf could ever be. His massive head is level with my chest and his shoulders are broader than my own. The wolf stares up at me, his golden eyes narrow, his ears fall back and a growl rumbles from deep in his chest. The sound rolls over me like ice water, freezing my muscles. Leave, the wolf barks. I'm Ivan the Grey. And this is my part of the forest. My mind sparks with a fleeting excitement that I can understand him. But then Ivan's dark lips scrunch upwards, revealing long, shining fangs. And he lets out an echoing snarl that seizes my heart. One of the first things I was taught in the village, even before I learnt to read or write, was what to do when faced with, with a wolf. So I know I'm meant to avoid eye contact. Lower my head and back away. But I've lost control of my body. My eyes are locked on Ivan's and won't shift. And my claws sink deeper into the snow to root me in place. Leave! Ivan barks again. Muscles ripple across his back and his fur lifts, making him look even larger. I draw myself to my full height and glare down at Ivan. It took enough strength and heartache to make the decision to leave Mimochka, so I'm not retreating now, not for a wolf or anything else. Let me pass! I shout as loud as I can, but Ivan tilts his head, and when moonlight glints off his teeth, my voice cracks and wavers. Ivan's mouth widens into a mocking grin. You're weak. You don't belong in the snow forest. He prowls forwards until his snout is less than an arm's length away. His fur smells like old rain and leaf litter, and his breath has the edge of something rotten. Mousetrap trembles in my pocket, and I'm overwhelmed by an urge to be strong for both of us. Let me pass, I repeat, and this time my voice holds steady. Ivan stops still. He lifts his snout, breathes in, and recognition flashes in his eyes. But then he seems to shake it off, and he lunges, mouth open, straight towards my neck. I drop the lantern and raise my arms to protect myself. Ivan bites down on my elbow, crushing it between his powerful jaws. I yell in pain and fall back. My spine smacks into the ground, punching the breath from my lungs. Ivan's dark, wet nose is right above mine. Drool drips from his teeth onto my cheek. My muscles become quivering leaves. I push back with all my might, but Ivan presses down and bites harder. I struggle, trying to roll over or kick him off, and my arm knocks something. My lantern. I grab it and swing it at Ivan's head. The metal base hits Ivan above his eyes. He yowls in pain and releases my arm. I scramble back against the tree and stagger to my feet, holding my throbbing arm against my chest. The skin on my elbow aches and burns, but I can't feel any blood trickling from the bite. I stare at Ivan and he stares back. So many thoughts flicker in his eyes, and I wish I could read his mind as well as understand his words. Neither of us moves from what seems like an eternity. White clouds plume from our mouths and mingle in the icy air. Hot blood pulses through my veins and my elbow pounds. Finally, Ivan curls back his lips and snarls. He lifts a paw hesitantly, like he can't decide whether to attack again or dart away. His claws twitch, their thick, dark hooks as long as my thumb. You have a claw missing, I exclaim. Pain and fear vanish as one of Anatoly's stories jumps into my mind. The story of the wolf claw he gave me. What of it? Ivan growls. I slide a hand into my pocket and my fingers close around the claw. I have it. I'm so pleased it's still there that a smile bursts across my face. Ivan's growl deepens, but stops when I hold up the claw for him to see. Where'd you get that? He leans closer, sniffs the claw, and his ears dip forward with curiosity. 
Someone gave it to me. They told me that a baby girl tore it from a wolf. My cheeks flushed with embarrassment because stood here in front of the mountain of muscle and fang that is Ivan, the story sounds ridiculous. Ivan laughs, a throaty chuckle like cracking ice. I'm so relieved his attack seems to be over. A laugh rises in my own throat too. <laughs> a human baby could not tear a claw from me. Ivan sits back and licks his paw. A shaft of moonlight falls over him, highlighting patches of white hairs in his grey fur that dust his muzzle and chin. He looks old, and so much smaller now. I relax a little and look at the claw in my hand. No, I don't suppose they could. I sigh and slide the claw back into my pocket. It was just a story, made up to entertain me when I was young. I haven't heard a story in a young t long time. Ivan leans sideways and yawns. Tell me. Delight bubbles through me. To be fighting off a wolf one moment and then being asked to tell him a story the next is as strange and magical as growing bear legs. And, as I love telling stories so much, the words tingle on my tongue. I lean against the tree behind me and slide down until I'm crouched level with Ivan. My elbow aches and I cradle it with my hand. Mousetrap pokes his head out of my pocket, then darts through my sleeve up to my shoulder. I lower my chin to the familiar feel of his soft body, no longer trembling but warm and relaxed, as he waits for a tale to be told. If Ivan notices Mousetrap, he doesn't say anything. He just stares into the forest like he isn't bothered whether I tell the tale or not, but his ears are turned to me. It reminds me how, of how Mamochka listens to Anatoly's stories while pretending she isn't. I wonder if Mamochka was here. Would she pretend I wasn't talking to a wolf? I smile at the thought, then open my mouth and let the words of the story tumble out. The Wolf's Claw Once upon a time, a wolf pack hunted beneath a high, pearl moon. They stalked through the shadows, paws silent on the snow. And when the thrill of the hunt became too much to contain, they threw howls into the sky that splintered the night air. The pack leader, a grey wolf with golden eyes, stopped still, one paw hovering above the snow. His ears turned to the faraway crunch of a tiny footstep, and he lifted his snout high. Then he grinned a fangsome grin, because he smelled prey, plump and weak. Anticipation fluttered through the wolf. He took off after the prey, and in a whispering whirlwind, his pack followed. The wolves sped through the forest, swerving around trees and leaping over shrubs, but as they approached a sparkling glade, they slowed to a gentle sigh. They glimpsed a human child, not four seasons old, stood naked in the snow on pink, fleshy legs. The child giggled at icicles clinking in the boughs and burbled to the high, swaying branches. Leaves chattered back in the language of the forest. But then the wolf stepped into the glade, and all was silent. From behind the trees crept the rest of the pack, black and white and silver in the night. They watched their leader closely, shivering with excitement, waiting for the signal to attack. The grey wolf licked his fangs and smiled. Child, he growled, you should not be here alone. My pack and I are hungry, and it's our duty to eat the weak, so only the strong creatures of the forest survive. The child turned to the wolf and spoke in the language of the forest. I am strong, so I will live. Laughter rumbled from the grey wolf. Fight if you wish. If you're strong enough, you may earn your place in the snow forest. And he prowled forwards Fang's bed. But the child stared into the grey wolf's eyes with such courage and determination that the wolf stopped, dipped his head, and took a step back. Our leader retreats, 
whispered the wolves of the pack. He fears the child. I have no fear, snapped the grey wolf. His fur bristled and he glowered at the child. You're not stronger than me and my pack. The child looked at the wolves to her right and to her left. And she lifted her chin high. For she felt she had the strength of the forest inside her. Attack! snarled the wolves to their leader. You must lead the pack. The grey wolf hesitated again, confused by the strength radiating from such small prey. But the child was alone, and he was the leader of the pack. He darted towards the little girl with the lips drawn back, and the other wolves followed in his wake. The child stood tall, raised her arms, and in the moment before the grey wolf's paws landed on her chest, she closed her fingers around one of the claws and pulled. The claw ripped free, and the wolf yelped as he fell to the ground in shock. The child giggled, and the wolf's golden eyes burned with anger and shame. The wolf pack scattered in dismay that their leader had been overpowered by such tiny prey, and the grey wolf limped into the forest alone. That night, while licking his tender injured paw in the shadows beneath the trees, the grey wolf vowed he wouldn't return to his pack until he had proven himself strong enough to be leader once more. <laughs>